today on Live Your Faith. He said, I want you to speak the word of God out loud all the time. Well, when you're speaking the word of God out loud all the time, you're not speaking your own words. You're not choosing beyond yea and nay. You're going, yes, hallelujah, that's what he said. And no, the devil can't do this, hallelujah, because his word said so. I mean, your yea and your nay is going to be based on the word. The Bible was not made to be written silent. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1, it says, Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. The Greek word slip means they'll leak out. See, so you can have a, a, a vessel that is full, but if you get, get a hole in it, over time it can leak out like your car. Right? Amen. The, the uh, tires on your car. You can leak out air till one day you have a flat. It doesn't happen overnight. Praise God. I mean, you don't, but if you don't pay attention, one day you can have one. Well, he said here, praise God, to remind you of some things that you have already been taught and to remind you of some things you've already heard that you have let leak out. And so my job today is, is to be an air pressure pump to refill your, <laughs> refill your tire of faith today in this particular service. Are you listening to intent? So go to Genesis chapter 1. Let's get started. I need three hallelujahs this morning. One for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Ghost. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 reads as follows. God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, fowl of the air, cattle over all the earth. You are made in God's image and God's likeness, which means what? Praise God. Well, we're the part I'm going to talk about that is that you, you were made to operate just like God. The way God operates, he made you to operate the same way. How does God operate? Well, God creates everything, and he does it with his words. He created the earth, and God said. You know how Genesis chapter 1 says, and God said, 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 and God said. Instead of grammatically, you would have written, and God said, and list all the things that he said. Praise God. But instead, we have the Hebrew having us each time telling us that God did everything he did by words of his mouth. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, he made you the same way. You have the same God-like creative ability through your words. Now, turn to Matthew chapter 5. You are made in God's likeness. You are made in God's form. You are made in God's image, and whether or not you realize it or not, praise God, one inch below your nose is a 12-gauge, sawed-off, double-barrel shotgun. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. It's got massive creative ability, and it's also got massive destructive ability. And it's very important what you do with a shotgun. I mean, if, if I stepped there for, on, on the stage and brought my 12-gauge, amen, and I got up here and I went, hey, praise the Lord, hallelujah, well, guess, what, guess what, what would be happening? People would be diving under the seats. Why? Because you know that 12-gauge could put a hole in your back that big. Amen? And in fact, praise the Lord, you know that you wouldn't give something that is that, that profound and that dangerous to somebody that wasn't, wasn't mature enough to handle it. In other words, you wouldn't put a 12-gauge shotgun in the hand of a six-year-old. Why not? Well, a six-year-old doesn't have enough maturity to handle it. Amen? A six-year-old, I say, ah, ha, 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 do the same thing. Bang! You know, like, what, what was that? Amen. In other words, maturity is necessary to handle something of great power. Now, listen what the Lord Jesus said here in Matthew, praise God, chapter 5, verse 37. If you have a red letter edition, you know he's speaking. He said, let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay, or yes or no. For, listen to what he says. Whatever else is more than that comes of evil. He said, 
You either say yes or you say no. And if you add anything else to that, it is evil. Well, evil is sin. Evil means Satan's involved in it. You mean Satan is after my mouth? You mean Satan's after my words? You mean Satan wants to add to my communication so that he could use it? Absolutely. Jesus said so. Praise God. Now, I didn't write that. You, this is not, keep, keep chapter 6 right here, keep chapter 5. This is what the Lord Jesus said about it. Now, let's go a little further with that. Hallelujah. Turn to St. John chapter 12. Praise his holy name. I don't like quiet churches. I'm not used to quiet churches. I just came back from preaching in Russia. Praise God. I did six sessions in Moscow, Russia. Praise God. Pre speaking for Rick Renner over there, six sessions. And the, the uh, Russians are known to be very quiet and still and all of that. But man, praise God. By the time I was done with them Russians, they was... <laughs> Mac Hammonds, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, Rick Renner said, I ain't never seen my church act like that ever. <laughs> Amen. I don't believe in quiet churches. <laughs> Amen. When I was out in the world, man, I used to make a ton of noise for the devil. <laughs> Amen. I wasn't quiet then. I'm sure they ain't going to be quiet for God. Hallelujah. Somebody shout amen this morning. Glory to God. St. John chapter 12. Let's read verse 50 there. Praise God. Listen to what Jesus also said. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. He's referring to the Father. In fact, I'm going to back up to verse 49 and slow down the word. I'm going to slow down a little bit. For I have not spoken of myself, Jesus said. But the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. Jesus just said that he does not choose and did not choose his own words. Jesus said, I only say what the Father says to me to say, and I don't say anything else. Well, with somebody who would tell you only say yay and, and nay and anything else is of the devil, then, and then for him to come back and say, I don't choose my own words, I only speak what the Father tells me to say, gives us an indication of why God could turn up the power in him. Jesus operated with the Spirit without measure. Why? Because God could trust him with a 12-gauge sawed-off shotgun. He could be trusted to point the shotgun in the right direction and only pull the trigger when you're supposed to do it. Are you listening to me? Praise God. God could turn up the power on him all the way because Jesus never spoke words other than what the Lord told him to say. So when he spoke to that fig tree, as you are very well aware of, when he spoke to that fig tree, it was the Father who told him to say what he said. Okay, amen? Praise God. Now, that means Jesus didn't sin with his mouth. Now, let's go a little, little further with this. Praise God. Hallelujah. Turn to St. John 14. We'll listen to the Lord Jesus again. Hear what he said. Praise God. We're talking about the language of faith this morning. Praise God at this session. St. John chapter 14, verse 10, Jesus said, Believeth thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. But the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Once again, Jesus said what? Jesus said, I don't choose my own words. Now, we are made in the image of God, and God expects us to operate just like the Son of God, because we are sons of God. 
John 1, 12 says, as many as them that received Jesus, and them gave he power, right, privilege, authority, to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. You ever notice that if, if you go to certain parts of the country, like if you go to Boston, which has been in the news recently, you notice there's a certain twang which Bostonians speak. If you go down to Texas, where I live right now, if you go down there, you will hear that there's an accent that Texans have. If you go over to Rush, even when I was just, just came from, praise God, the Russians who speak in English, they speak that R with a R with it, amen. In other words, you will notice that people who are commonly in the same, same family or in the same district or in the same area, they have a common way of speaking. There is a way of speaking in which you should be able to identify every Christian. Are you listening to me? They ought to, they ought to be able to say, that's one of them Christians by the way they speak. The Word told us what? That we, we live by faith. Living by faith, praise God, means that faith is not supposed to be used as an emergency device. It's not supposed to be a lever that when we get in trouble, then all of a sudden we jump on faith and start to believe and start speaking because we got this problem. No, faith is supposed to be a lifestyle. This is something we do every day. It's not even something we got to consciously think, think about doing. It's just a mode of action, just a way of living, just a way of speaking. And speaking is part of a lifestyle of faith. Speaking what? Only words from God. Now turn to St. John chapter 16. I need three more praise the Lord's. Yeah, that was all right. <laughs> I ain't got time to get on it, so I'm gonna I'm gonna let y'all slide because I only got a short period of time. Otherwise, I'd get on your case this morning. No, I love you. Praise God. Get ready for one of the biggest events of the year, an experience that will change your life. You're going through what you are dealing with today, hallelujah, and you are going to come out on the other side victorious. I said you are going to come out on the other side victorious because the Father is your shepherd and you shall not. It ain't what they did to your grandma. It ain't what they did to your daddy. It's not what they did to you. It's what's coming out of your mouth that will either condemn you or justify you. You're not going to tell me that my Jesus cannot heal me. I don't believe that. He's already done it. If he said it, he will do it. If he spoke it, he will bring it to pass. He has not failed you in the past, and he's not going to fail you right now. You don't need to worry about faith for tomorrow. You're not living tomorrow. You're living now. The 2015 Word of Faith Convention, June 10th through the 13th, and you don't want to miss it. Amen. Good preacher. Woo! Glory to God. St. John chapter 16, verse 13. Here's Jesus again. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come. Who's the spirit of truth? Holy Ghost. When he, the Spirit of truth, has come. Somebody tell me where the Holy Ghost is. Amen. He's on the inside of us right now. When he has come, he will guide you into all truth. That Greek word guide means he will show you the way. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. The Holy Spirit doesn't speak his own words either. In other words, he only speaks the words that he hears the Father says. And he repeats to you what the Father said to say to you. Amen. He goes on to say here, praise God, that, that he shall hear, he shall speak, and he will show you things to come. He'll glorify me, Jesus said, for he shall receive a man and he'll show it unto you. And so the word that the Holy Ghost speaks to your spirit is the word of the Father. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word. Yeah, amen. amen. Praise God. Romans 10, 17 says faith comes by hearing and hearing. Doesn't come, come by just having heard. It comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. In other words, the consistency of hearing the Word, praise God, produces a result in you that is simply marvelous. 
Now, God never intended for the Bible to be read silently. I'm going to say that again. God never intended for the Bible to be read silently. The Bible was written with the intent of it always being read aloud. Amen. Right? In fact, turn to Deuteronomy 26. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I said, thank you, Jesus. See, some people think because, because they have memorized the word and they can quote scripture, they think that's good enough. Praise God. I heard Brother Copeland say this a couple of months ago, and I thought I couldn't have said it any better. I've been saying the same thing, but the way he said it just really gave some punch into it to me. He said, the memory of a potato gives you no nourishment. Classic Brother Copeland. <laughs> he said, the memory of a potato gives you no nourishment. Only when you eat the potato do you get any nourishment. Lots of believers think, well, they, they've heard the word. They, they, they can quote the word. And, you know, I mean, they, they remember it. Amen. But the memory of the potato won't cause you to get any nourishment. You only get nourishment when you eat the potato. How do I eat? Well, before I get there, let's read here in Deuteronomy 26. Here in Deuteronomy 26, God builds the children of Israel a way in which he wants them to tithe. Now, if you go all the way back to Deuteronomy chapter 5, because, praise God, the, what we're going to read in Deuteronomy 26, 27, and 28 is all based off of Deuteronomy chapter 5. What's in Deuteronomy chapter 5 is when he first speaks to them about the Ten Commandments. And you know that the commands of God are more than just the ten. And it goes on through a whole lot of other stuff he told them all through these other chapters. Amen? Praise God. Well, when he gets to chapter 26, he begins to teach them about how he wants them to give. How dare to do it. In verse chapter 1 of chapter 26, shall be when thou art coming to the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance and possesseth it and dwelleth therein, that thou shalt take up the first of all the fruit of the earth which thou shalt bring of thy land that the Lord thy God giveth thee. Put it in a basket. You shall go into the place where the Lord thy God shall choose to place his name there, and you shall go unto the priest that shall be in those days, and you shall say unto him, the priest is God's representative. You're going to say this unto him, I profess this day before the Lord thy God. I'm coming to the country with the Lord swearing to our fathers to give us. The priest shall take the basket out of your hand, set it down before the altar of the Lord, and you shall say, you shall speak and say before the Lord thy God, a Syrian ready to perish was my father. He went down into Egypt and sojourned there with a few and became there a nation great, mighty, and populous. In other words, they are to say about their history how God had taken care of them. God had brought us out of the land of bondage. God had raised up our father Abraham. God had brought us across the Red Sea. God has taken care of us and our family all of our lives. In other words, praise God, even when you tithe, you're not supposed to just put something in the bucket. I didn't when I put that offering. I didn't then. I didn't then. Praise God. I began to say something out my mouth. Hallelujah. I began to say, Father, you have provided for me in the past. You have provided for me and Deborah all of these years. You've taken care of us and our ministry and our children and now our grandchildren. And I want to thank you for what you have already done. Hallelujah. And I thank you, Father, not only that, but you'll continue to do so in the future. You are my God. You supply all my needs according to riches in glory. And that's the Holy Ghost on the inside of us. And I want to thank you for it. Glory to God. In other words, your mouth is actually what's tithing. You tithe the tithe with words. Are you listening to me? Because words is the creative force. Let's read some more here. Praise God. We were on, we were on, he went on to say in verse 10, Now behold, I brought the first fruit of the land which thou, O Lord, hast given me, and thou shalt set it before the Lord thy God and worship before the Lord thy God, and thou shalt rejoice in every good thing. Verse 10 says, then, then you shall say before the Lord thy God. There's more you're supposed to say. I will give you 
the opportunity to read that for yourself later. But all the way through the entire giving process, they were to put their words in gear. And what they were to say is what God had said and what God had done. Then when you get over to chapter 27, praise God. He's going to tell them when you get over into the promised land in verse 22, verse 12, excuse me. These shall stand before Mount Gerizim to bless the people which are come up upon Jordan, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Yusuf, or Joseph, and Benjamin. These shall stand upon Mount Arbal to curse Reuben, Gad, Asher, Zebulun, Dan, and Leptine. Amen. Well, as they got into the promised land, God divided the children of Israel. And there in Israel, there are two mountains that are side by side. And he took, he split the chosen 12 tribes of Israel, put six on one mountain, six on another mountain. The one on one mountain was to speak out loud all the things that he had said, which is the word of God or the commands out loud for everybody to hear. The priests were to say it, and the people were to say it. And so they talked about the curse, the Word of God. Well, chapter 28 is the one we all love. We love chapter 28. Chapter 28, verse 1, praise God. It shall come to pass if you shall hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God shall set thee on high above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake you. We love these. Blessing the city and blessing the field and blessing the basket and blessing the store and bless coming in and bless coming out. And the Lord shall command the blessings in your storehouses and in all you set your hands on, on, onto. Praise God. The enemy shall come against you one way and run from you seven different ways. You shall lend unto many and not borrow. All these things are the commands of the Lord and both of them, the curse and the blessing, were to be read out loud. What did God say to Joshua? Joshua 1, hey, Joshua's got to take them over to that promised land before they get up on this mountain. What did God say to Joshua? This book of the law. What is the book of the law? The Word of God. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein. The word meditate means to talk, to speak, it means to advocate, amen. It even means to shout and boast, amen. amen. This book of the law shall not depart of your, out of your mouth, but you shall shout about it, you shall speak it, you shall utter it, you shall say it day and night that you may observe to do all that's written therein. Then you're going to make your way prosperous, and then you, you're going to have good success. In other words, he said, I want you to speak the Word of God out loud all the time. Well, when you're speaking the Word of God out loud all the time, you're not speaking your own words. You're not choosing beyond yea and nay. You're going, yes, hallelujah, that's what he said. And no, the devil can't do this, hallelujah, because his word said so. I mean, your yea and your nay is going to be based on the word. The Bible was not made to be written silently. The Bible was made to be written aloud or spoken aloud. When you read the Word of God every morning, and I hope you read the Word of God every morning, but when you read the Word of God every morning, you're supposed to read it out loud. When you read it out loud, guess what happens? Faith comes. When you read it out loud, faith comes. When you read it out loud, praise God, you build up yourself. Hallelujah. When you read it out loud, hallelujah, you spoken it out of your mouth. And what did Jesus tell the disciples in Mark 11, 23? Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast in the sea and not doubt in his heart, but shall believe what he says shall come to pass, he'll have whatever he says. Well, how do you believe without doubt? When you come to a place that every day, like Joshua, you say it day and night, and you make a decision to speak it only. Now, the way we've been trained in our lives, even from children, We've been trained always to give a retort or a response immediately when things happen in our lives. 
Now, I'm going to ask you to turn to Proverbs, if you would. I need three more praise the Lord from somebody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Proverbs chapter 15. Praise God. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. The Lord told me to remind you today because you allowed some of this to slip, allowed it to leak out. And because you've allowed it to leak out, then you don't have the full result that you, have, that you should have and allow Satan to get in the midst of the operations in your life. Are you listening to me? Praise God. Glory to God. So I was saying that the way we, we have come up with is that we always think we have to give an immediate response to something. I mean, you used to get cool points when you were a kid. If you could give a quick resort, or retort to something somebody says. We used to call it back in the day, capping on somebody. <laughs> or later on, beasting on somebody. I don't know what they call it now. I'm over 50 years old, but, but <laughs> I'm sure they still got somewhere. Somebody say something, you got something quick to say back, amen? Especially girls. This comes natural to them for some reason. <laughs> I know that with my granddaughters, man, before you could even get the words out your mouth, they will have cut you 10 different ways. <laughs> Amen. Well, that's the way we train. So we think that we have to give a reply. We just feel that way because we've been trained that way all our lives. That is not the way the Lord Jesus operates. God could trust him because he always kept the safety up on the shotgun. He kept it on safe till he was ready to pull the trigger on purpose. Praise God. Isn't the word good? If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to make sure that you know him and that you find him in your life today. All you have to do is pray with me right now. That's right. Bow your heads. Pray with me right now. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I do believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he died for me on the cross, is risen from the dead, and is the Lord and Savior. And that's all it takes. Right now, he's coming to your heart, and he saved you now. We want to give you some material that will help you with your new walk with Christ. It's called, Where Do We Go From Here? And our announcers, I'll tell you more about it in the name of Jesus. The Word of God entered your spirit as you just received Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, the real you. Your spirit was born again. That means that you're now a new creation in Christ, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. This process started an immediate change in your mind and body. However, to continue this process of change, you must put away your old habits and learn how to walk in your new life with God by starting your day with the Father in prayer. Just a simple prayer of praise and thanksgiving helps to build your fellowship with God. Thank Him for His love, confidence, patience, loving kindness, peace, healing power, safety from all dangers, mercy, wisdom, and guidance for this day. Be sure to take the time to read the Word of God daily. Just like your natural body needs food, your spirit man needs to be fed the Word of God. Also, please write to the address on your screen so we can send you this very important booklet called, Where Do I Go From Here? It contains a wealth of information that you will need now that you've decided to ask the Lord into your heart and continue your walk with God. Finally, it's important that you also take the time to find a church home and have fellowship with other full-time gospel believers. Our prayer for you is that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Well, this is Keith Butler reminding you to have a wonderful day and always remember to fight the good fight of faith.